Welcome again to another video of PCB Heaven Tech Labs. In this video, I will show you the easy way to turn this into this and salvage all those nice little bits and parts for future use. So, here's what you will need. First, you need a thermal gun. I use this powerful 2000 watts hot air gun that I use also in my work to melt glue and grease. To avoid toasting the parts, the gun must be equipped with temperature controller. Next you will need a metallic container. This one is made of aluminum because I don't want the bin to maintain the heat, but any other metallic bin will do just fine. You will also need some tools to extract the parts from the PCB, like some different flat screwdrivers and some pliers. And finally, you will need the victim, the PCB itself. For this video, I will remove the parts from an old Asus motherboard. Here is how we start. Place the metallic bin on the table and then place the motherboard on the metallic bin with the parts facing down. Then turn on the hot air gun and start heating up the solder. This is a process that must be done slowly to avoid overheating any region. Keep the hot air gun in a distance of about 8 to 10 cm from the PCB. After a while the solder will be liquefied and then you can either heat the PCB or you can pull the parts with the screwdriver or the pliers. The parts will be removed easily and undamaged from the PCB. Look at those port connectors, how easily were removed. Some parts can be removed with ease while some other parts are harder to remove. There is only one rule. Practice makes perfect. You may also want to have an additional container to put all the parts you remove inside. That is because if you leave the ripped parts in the container under the PCB, they will be filled with solder which is difficult to remove afterwards. Also, there are many integrated circuits that will be removed from the PCB and they will be fully functional but those chips are very sensitive in static electricity. Therefore, you may consider using anti-electrostatic discharge protection restraps or any other means of precaution against electrostatic discharge. I totally encourage all of you to start salvaging parts from old PCBs, for the PCB may be dead, but not useless. Economy is the least of the profits you will get from this process. First of all, it's the most green thing that you can do with your electronic waste. And sometimes it's fun too. Moreover, from PCBs you will rip parts that are very hard or even impossible to find in stores. Take for example these colored 3.5 audio jacks. I don't say that it's impossible to get, but frankly, it's very hard to find. As a matter of fact, I have used such jacks myself for my computer mode, and they are just great. I don't need to mark what each jack is because of the color code they have. But most of all, salvaging parts from old PCBs is extremely educative. You will find solutions that professionals gave before you and you will discover new parts that you didn't know they even existed. For example, some time ago I ripped the parts from a PCB from an old photocopier and I discovered the STK672 series stepper motor controllers which are just awesome. I downloaded the appropriate data sheets and I made some circuits to test it. 
It's very small in size and can control up to 2.8 ampere stepper motors with micro stepping and three other step modes. Did you know that you can get these parts for less than 15 bucks from eBay? I didn't. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to visit my website for more interesting hacks.